Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Before I start, I, as I was preparing for the message, uh, which the message is called Cave Not. What are you doing here? And if you want, already you can go to your Bibles and just park yourself in 1 Kings verse 19. I'm not going to go now, but you can start reading if you like, if you don't know the story, because it's going to be based on the prophet Elijah. But as I was preparing for the message, I'm going to tell you what the Lord spoke to me to speak to you, and it's for me as well. And I believe that this church has a mandate. Literally, and with all my heart, I believe that Elevate has a mandate from heaven. And that mandate is that we, as people, God's people, that people will, we as people will be able to receive the broken, the lost, the hurting, and that we don't think we, are, we have a right in life that we cannot help other people. This church has a mandate for these doors to be open for every broken person that is lost outside, whether Christians or not. It doesn't matter. Jesus died for the world. He didn't die for religion. He died for the world. He didn't say, I'm dying for Christianity. He said, I'm dying for the world because I love the world so much. Then I'm going to give my son. I believe that this place is a place that no matter where you are in life, maybe you are at the highest moment in your life, we celebrate you. Because wish you have those moments. Wish you have those victories. You as a child of God and me as a child of God, wish you taste the victories that we have in Jesus. But there's other people that maybe they're broken. And I believe that tonight there's a lot of people that you're sitting here tonight and you look well. You're looking great. You look the part. Have you ever looked the part? You're like, hmm. I saw someone like, oh, yeah. But I'm here to tell you that God wants to reconstruct your life. I'm here to tell you that God can reshape your life. People will come at Elevate and be reshaped. Do you believe that? Amen. You can't be more like be dust, be mud in the, in the hands of Jesus, in the hands of God. But guess what? You're still in the hands of Jesus. So we sometimes, we are feel like we're dissolving. You know, I'm just mud. I'm just mar. Like, what is he going to do with you? You know what he's going to do? He's going to sustain you. He's going to hold you. This is a place where broken people can come and be healed. But you, if you're broken today, you have to receive it for you. Because there is no way that we can go outside and tell the people when we ourselves do not receive it for us. And I'm speaking on my behalf. Right? When you stop preaching to yourself then you probably are off. Your compass, your, your spiritual compass is off. When we think, you know what, I, I don't need that. I'm doing so well. Well, and if you're doing so well, please go help the people that are not. Please. That's your mandate. It's our command from heaven. This is a place where you can find hope against hope. You know when you lost hope? Have you ever lost hope? Am I the only one? Thank you for the seven again. The mighty, the, you know. You're like, no, I can't raise that in church. You know what? In church, and when you sh that's when you should raise your hand and say, you know what? Yeah, I, I, I lost hope a, a couple of times. Actually, a few years, or, you know, whatever it is. You know what? Because that brings freedom to your life. That already, you know, you want to eradicate shame? Then tell it like it is. Tell it like it is. Don't be ashamed. <laughs> I'm giving my words. Let your conscience and Holy Spirit be your guide. 
baby, my time. No, okay, stop. Can you tell my husband's not here, so I'm singing. Let me tell you, and if you want to give me a record deal, we talk after church. Let me tell you, nobody, and I mean nobody, is so far out, so bad, so distant from God that he cannot reach you. Because many times we feel so lost, we d we've done some bad things. You're like, oh, not me. No, let's call it what it is, right? We have to, in order to be set free, in order to walk in the truth of God, in order to walk in wholeness, we need to face life with Jesus. Right? We call this house Elevate because we are constantly elevating. Have you ever felt, remember, I'm still wearing my stretch little, were you here for the series stretch? And if you haven't, go watch it. It's amazing. I got my own because it has to match with my shoes, so it depends what, I'm, what shoes I'm wearing. <laughs> I might be colorblind, but I'm not, you know. I have to match. Stretch, stretch, right? Elevate because we're constantly elevating, moving forward, and we're all a work in progress. You know that you are a work in progress? Say, I am a work in progress. And God is happy that you are a work in progress. Because that means that he can always, you always go from glory to glory. You always go getting better and better. And when you get to heaven is when you did the bestest, right? I even added that bestest. It's not such a thing as the bestest. But in heaven there is. We could be the bestest in heaven. So be encouraged today because your future in Jesus is always bright. Hebrews 11.1 1 says this, write it down, because I'm sure you don't know this scripture. It's, oh, you know it, but you haven't walked it. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay, listen again. Now, faith, faith is for when? You can pretend we're in school, yeah? <laughs> now, faith is for when? Now, is it for tomorrow? Is it for yesterday? So if you're already living in your tomorrow, are you in faith? If you're still stuck in the past, are you in faith? But if you're living today and embracing your day, whether it's good, bad, or ugly, but you see today and you can say, you know what? I still have hope. But, but it's easy said than done. It's so easy to say, you know what, no, I am hoping. And you're like, you're hoping. I'm talking about the hope that has a name, right? I'm not hoping like hoping is considered, if you, if you look in the dictionary, is something that you expect to happen. Like, you know, hopefully it happens, you know? Like, I don't know if that, that's ever come out of your mouth. Like, hopefully it will happen. You know, I'm expecting, but, you know, kind of, sort of, but, you know, I don't know. But you know that without hope, faith cannot be activated. So sometimes we are so fixated and trying to, where is my faith, right? We, we sit it like, I don't know, but I feel like I don't have faith. I'm going to tell you when you feel that you don't have faith, it's not that you don't have faith. It's that you have lost hope. You feel like you lost hope, but let me tell you that you're hopelessly in hope. Why? Because if you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you always have hope. So it's at the moment when you feel that most lost, most dark, in the darkest place. Have you ever fallen so deep in the depth of despair? Have you fallen there? I have. Many times. And I'm going to tell you that it's in that place that it shows really who do you believe in. And then that's when you have to remind yourself, you know, the hope, my hope, is not just a, a faraway dream. I hope I get better. I hope my family gets healed. I hope my children come back to Jesus. I hope I get this job. I hope my career takes off. I hope my business, whatever. I hope one day, if that's the hope you have, then that's not Jesus. 
because hope goes hand in hand with faith. So faith. So you have to, today you have to find yourself in hope. And I can honestly tell you that every day I have to tell myself, Virginia, you are in hope today. But I want to say, but I'm not, I'm not, I don't feel in hope. But then I have to remind myself, and that's why you need the word of God daily in you. And you have to say, no, uh, the hope that I'm talking about, the hope is my substance, the one that sustains me, is going to sustain me, is Jesus. That's my truth. Yeah, the fact is that I am depressed. That's a fact. But my truth is that my hope is Jesus and he sustains me. See, that's different. The reality is that maybe you're dealing with cancer. Okay, that is a fact. But the truth is that Jesus took upon himself every sickness, every disease, and he took it so you and I can stand and believe for wholeness and healing. Right? Maybe we're de you're dealing with mental health issues. That's okay. Church, you know that that's okay? My God, we're like, well, don't talk about that. The church should be the safest place where people can come and tell, you know what, I think I'm going crazy. And they were not, no, no, don't see that. Don't see that. And you're sticking the word like spooning them, you know? Oh, that's the moment that you psh, believe in the hope of your glory. And you can say, that's okay, because you know what? My Jesus, actually, his name is Hope. And if you receive him, you have to own your own story, own your own life. Because I believe that there is a movement. You know, as they were singing praise and worship here tonight, I can see us opening in big stadiums. I was like, I can hear the sound of heaven. And it's not because, are they skilled? Yes. Can they sing? Yes. But it was beyond that. It was because they were singing hope. Seriously. Because you don't know what they're going through. They could be singing a little louder, right? And inside it's like, ah, all these voices. But I'm going to tell you that they, they made a choice to sing a little louder for Jesus. And I can see people need to see the truth. People need to know their facts. And they need to embrace the facts and embrace the truth at the same time. But if we just choose one, well, no, we can't. No, no, no. It's time to, for the church to take the position that has been given to the church. And when I say the position, it's not the building, it's you. It's me. It's time for you to own your own story. We are all afraid to say that you have anxiety. You know what? I deal with anxiety and I deal with Jesus. Taking a shower is whew, a leap of faith. Do you know that I celebrate now? fixing my hair I'm like I'm every day I'm going to say something good and I'm going to recognize Jesus when he's present in my life I have denied him for too long I'm not denying the facts but I have denied the power of Jesus in my life is this too much for you do you need me to sing Like maybe they need a little song from me. <laughs> See, hope is to want something to happen. Hope is an expectation, as I told you. I told you, believe it's equal to faith. It's to think something is being true without having any proof. That's what faith is. Like, I don't need proof. So let me ask you, are you in faith today? Are you in hope today? Because if we're asking for proof, if you demand proof, you need to know like, okay, then I need to walk to work on my hope. Because isn't it funny that we're asking for proof and you know that we already have the proof because it says that faith, faith is, now faith is the substance of thing hoped for. 
And hope is Jesus, and we're asking for proof, and yet the proof was already given to us 2,000 years ago. But yet I want proof, right? My spouse better change. Come on. I can't believe you, Lord. I cannot be fasting. I'm disappearing. <laughs> Send me a sign. I cannot be fasting for my children my whole time because I send me a sign. Send me a sign that this is the church for me. We're like, really? We, ha we have gotten to that? And I'm including myself in that, okay? So don't feel like, oh my gosh. No, no, no. Because I have demanded signs from God. Show me a sign then. And if you show me a sign, just give me a little bit of a sign. And if you notice in the Old Testament, when you read your Bible, in the Old Testament, it was okay to ask for a sign. Guess what? Because there was no Jesus and there was no Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, angels had to come, you know. And he says the Spirit of God was like rare, like you had to be a prophet. And many times there were decades and, and, and centuries where the voice of heaven was silent. And now you and I are the voice of heaven. Yeah. I'm like, how can I be a voice of heaven? Because the enemy is going to come to shame you. Like, Virginia, if you have depression, if you're still dealing with things that happened in the past, well, deal with them, process them, but process them with Jesus and without shame. Yeah. Like, let us be free. Okay, Virginia. I can get very intense, but it's good. Though. It's good. I promise you I'm not upset. How is it? And that's what happened to Elijah, you know? He, he, he got into a little pickle. I love to say that. <laughs> and this little pickle, I mean, are you in uh, First Kings? Okay, read it on your own, okay? The before 18, 18, you're going to read it on your own. Because he was one of the greatest prophets, okay? So we think like, oh, if God is going to use me, if I'm going to do greater things for God, I'm never going to go through anything. I'm never going to confront issues. I'm, I should be like exempt from any trial, any sickness, any depression, any emotional, like, stability, any mental health issues. Can you, when you read this, you're like, oh, my gosh, this dude needed help. And he was the voice of heaven. And what am I saying this? Because it doesn't matter where you are, where you've been. God can use you now. So cave not. Do you know that God is okay with you going? We're going to have cave times. Say, I'm going to have a cave time moment. Maybe a cave time week sometimes. But God doesn't want you making a house inside the cave. You can go into a cave, but do not let the cave cave you in. Because I have caved in so many times. But you know that God is okay with you being in the cave? Oh, he is so amazing. Okay, let's go there. Here he comes. Oh, these wonderful glasses. First King 19, uh, verse 1 to 15, I think we're going to go. And, he, and so you know the whole story, okay, so he had a great victory. So the day before, this amazing dude just killed, I don't know how many, like, false prophets, right? And then not only that, but he has, say, he has seen great, mir great miracle signs and wonders. Can you imagine, like, this guy called a, a drought for three years, and guess what? It didn't rain for three years. And when he gave the, the, the command, and, okay, it's time for rain, then he rained. You will think that that will transform his life, right? Like, there is no way I will ever doubt because I know that when I said the drought needed to come, it came and like, you're like, voila, powerful, right? Then after that, the day before, so he's, he's, he's going against it because there's so many false prophets because there's the King Ahab and the Jezebel. You know about Jezebel, right? If not, just go study the Bible, <laughs> right? But then Jezebel gets a hold of what happened and so she's really upset, right? And so she is upset, and then he, I don't know how many how many prophets he killed, but th that day he, th th I mean the the false prophets they were cutting themselves, calling their own gods, and you know what their gods they're they're dead, they didn't hear anything. And then he was he was in a mountaintop. Have you ever been in a mountaintop moment? You even walk nice, right? 
This is for women. Men, I think you guys go like that. I don't know. I don't know. Shoulders back or, you know, you get your shirts and you'll flex or whatever. You know, whatever it is. And then for women, the hair is going like, shh. Right? You're even like, shh. Mountaintop moment. Right? And then the men are like, I don't know what you guys do. But... So he had a mountaintop moment, right? So he's like, ah. and then he decides to call fire from heaven. Not only fire from heaven, but he said, you know what? Pour water on these things. And then they're pouring tons of water. And then fire comes from heaven and consumes the whole thing. And wouldn't you think that would change your life? Right? That's an amazing miracle. And the next day, well, that's what we're going to pick up, right? Then, then Jezebel, you know, you know Jezebel, right? And they have told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. It also, how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. I mean, he killed them. You like those, like, uh, what's that movie, the Braveheart? Read the Bible. <laughs> you find drama, trauma, betrayal, like wars, like, name it. You see angels, you see donkeys speaking. <laughs> you have your own Shrek there. Right? So then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, come back to me, please. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me, you know, like there is Jezebel. So let the gods do to me and more also if you do not make your life as the life as one of them by tomorrow about this time. And then he saw that and he arose and, right, and ran from his life. Dude, you just called fire from heaven. But you know, what I notice is that usually after a great victory, there's such, such an aftermath. Many times, not always. A lot of trials waiting for you to punch you. And then he says this. He arose and ran from his life, and he went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. So that moment he decided, and he decided, you know what, this is too much. There's this woman, that I, don't, I don't know what she looked like, but I... I picture her, you know, someone tiny. Come on. She has no power. She serves a dead God, and then he serves an alive God who has proved himself over and over, but this time, because she said something, she took it as truth, and then he decided to run away. How many times have you run away because someone said something, or someone did something to you and you decide you know what uh, this is too much I just need to isolate myself because he said that he left his servant and he decided to run away and he says but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree that's a pretty cool name huh and then he prayed that he might die do you know that he was suicidal you're like, no, he wasn't. Okay, when you say, I want to die, those are suicidal thoughts. Not in Jesus' name. Excuse me, let me tell you the truth. When you, when you decide in the morning, like, oh, why did I wake up? Do you know that we're agreeing with the light of the enemy? Been there, done that. Jesus, take me. And that's what he said, and he meant it. He says, that he might die, he says, it's enough. Have you ever said, enough, I can't do this anymore? Enough, I'm done. So he said, now, Lord, take my life, for I am not better than my father's. And at that moment, you feel like the lowest of the lowest of the lowest on this earth. Because you know you're God, and then yet you wish to die. Because you have gotten at a point in your life where it's too much to handle the stress or whatever thing that you're going through. It's too much. Then as he lay and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched them. And he said to him, Arise and eat. Then he looked, and there by his head was a cake baked on coals in a jar of water. You know, nothing is hidden. You know people who ever called angel food cake? Have you ever had an angel food cake? This is where they got it from. <laughs> there was a cake delivered by the angels. Angel food cake, right? I came up with that one. 
So he ate and drank and lay down again. And then the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched them and said, Arise and eat because the journey is too great for you. But do you know that the angel wasn't talking about the journey that he was taking? He was talking about the journey that God and I has for, for you and I. Because that journey looks different than my journey when we decide to like, you know, I just need to run away. I just need to stay away from people. So he arose and ate and drank and he went in the strength of that for 40 days. We read it like, oh yeah, he got up and he was depressed. He wanted to die. And then an angel came. Like We're like, I mean, this is that real story, guys. As far as Horeb, the mountain of God, and there he went into a cave. So he was, he took him, and I was looking at a picture. It's this huge mountain, it's this little hole, and he took, it took him 40 days to arrive there. God never told them, I want you to go into the wilderness. I want you to, like, take 30, 40 days, and I want you to go up the mountain, because there you, maybe you're in a mountain that you shouldn't be. God never called you to climb the mountain. But you're there because you don't want to face what took place yesterday. Do you know how hard it is to face yesterday? I mean, really process yesterday with Jesus. And when I mean yesterday, it could be years when you were a child, whatever happened to you. It's hard. It's hard. And there he went into a cave, and he spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, what are you doing here, Virginia? What are you doing here, Elijah? So he said, this is what I love, you know. You know, have you ever been, like, you're done with life, and, and then you already made up your mind, and you repeat yourself over and over? You say, it's enough, you know. I'm the only one believing for my family. I'm the only one believing for my wholeness and my healing. No one cares for me. I'm alone. And yet you have people around and you won't even see them. And this is what he said. He said, I have been very zealous for the Lord, for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed the prophets with the sword. I alone am left. And if you continue reading, there were like 700 or more people prophets just like him but the devil will lie to you and, and he will tell you that you're the only one going through that situation you're the only one feeling like that feeling that you're having you're the only one dealing with your family issue or whatever it is he will tell you that you are the only one and, and he says and they seek to take my life you know that it will make you paranoid and he says and they seek to take my life it was Jezebel, who told them, I'm going to kill you. It wasn't they. It's not even King Ava because he couldn't even talk. So he's believing all these things, right? Then God said, go out. Wow, I can see now. Then he said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by in a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. So it was when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and when now it stood in the entrance of the cave do you understand that he was waiting for signs and God out of the mercy says okay you want signs because he says that he told them to go out but the Bible doesn't say that he went out while the earthquake is happening inside so he everything is falling apart and he's still in the cave there was such a wind so strong that he broke the rocks and yet he wouldn't move And there was a fire inside. Where did the fire come from? But then yet it was a small voice. So maybe you're waiting for a huge sign. And it's a small voice. A small, the small voice of Jesus telling you, come out of the cave. Get out. And you're waiting for a long prophetic word, right? No, I wanted God to tell me my future. Tomorrow is enough, believe me. So he said, 
And he said, I have been. And then it goes. This, he goes verbatim again, saying the same thing, right? Suddenly a voice came to him and he says, what are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very zealous again. You go to the same thing. I am the only one alone. No one's standing with me. No one understands me. I'm going crazy. I'm not getting any better. I'm not getting any younger. I have all these wrinkles. Right? Or whatever we said, like it's the same thing. But I'm going to tell you that you, if you decide to receive God and Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, God, it, God didn't shame them. We shame people. We judge people. God doesn't judge you because you know what? He said that he sent his only son to save you. He says not to condemn the world, but to save them. So who are you condemning? Are you condemning yourself? Then he said the whole thing, right? You can read it. He said verbatim, the same thing. He's alone and blah, 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 blah. Then the Lord said to him, go return on your way to the wilderness. Go return on your way to the wilderness of what? Where does God want you to return to the wilderness? What, the wilderness, have you heard of, of the wilderness? Like that's not a nice place, right? Like even going to Arizona, like, oh, I think about the wilderness. <laughs> like there's no trees? No, thank you. Don't send me there. Send me to Hawaii or like Cabo, I don't know, where there's trees. But it says, go back. Go back. It says, go return on your way to the wilderness. And I erased that because this is of Damascus. But what's your wilderness? Where, where do you need to go back and face what you need to face? You need to face it because the first wilderness that he decided to run to the wilderness, that was, some, that was his own, uh, he, he created that himself. He never sent them to that day on the trip that he went on a day's journey. He never told them, go there. No, no, no. I have a wilderness, but this wilderness is on purpose because you know what? It's in the wilderness that we're developed. It's in the wilderness that you get to find out who God is. I'm going to tell you that in my darkest moments, in my cave moments, when I didn't want to come out of the cave, when I was waiting for signs and wonders to show up, that's the moment that I know that God is more real than ever. And do I still deal with depression? Yes. Yes, and, I can, and I'm not ashamed of it. Am I planning to stay here for life and forever? No, because I know that my God is able to deliver me and set me free. And every day I wake up and I choose today. Today I can be, I can be strong. Today I can believe. Today when anxiety hits me, you know what? I can ride my emotions with Jesus. Because he never shames you. He just told them, Go return. He says, what are you doing here? Do you know that God is so interested in your what? Because it's in your what. What's your what? No, we are so stuck in the why. But why did this have to happen to me? Have you ever been there? But why? Why? I want to know the why. And God is saying like, why? Because many of our whys, you didn't have a choice. I'm going to tell you that a lot of my whys, I, did, whys, I didn't have a choice. I didn't. But now that I'm walk, walking in Jesus and I'm a grown woman, I have decisions. I can make decisions even when a why happens. And it's what are you going to do with your why? What are you going to do when nothing seems to be working? What are you going to do? What are you going to do with your doubt? What are you going to do with your unbelief? What are you going to do while you're in depression? What are you going to do when you're dealing with sickness? What are you going to do? What are you going to do when you don't see the promise that God gave you and you've been standing? You've been saying, Lord, but I have stand, I have stood, and you are not moving. And God is saying, just come out of that cave. Please come out of the cave. He wants you to come out of the cave. And you know, we, God is not afraid of caves. He has a lot of like, what well, he knows. You know who was in a cave? Jesus. Jesus, because in those times when you were dead, you, if you, were, you only went in a cave if you were to be dead. Then let's put you in a cave. 
But I'm going to tell you, it's not by your own strength. It's not by your own power. God wants to deliver you because this is the same spirit that resurrected Jesus from the dead that dwells inside of you. He dwells inside of you. You have to say, Jesus and his spirit dwells inside of me and he can give me life because he is life. He's able to be your hope because he is hope. He is love. Maybe you've been rejected. Maybe you're sitting here tonight and you're thinking, I know that I'm going to pray for you right now I'm going to ask our, our, our worship to come up because I believe that there's so many of you here sitting and you have been having suicidal thoughts and you've been carrying a lot of shame and God will tell you son daughter come out come out and I want you to go back where you need to go back go back to the first love because God will never leave you and believe me maybe a year ago I didn't feel like that but I can honestly tell you that you get stronger life might not get better your situation might not get better you family might not change overnight your spouse might not change overnight your children might not be delivered overnight your business might not arise overnight I don't know but I'm gonna tell you that you get stronger you get stronger do you believe me do you get stronger I mean to be honest with you I am alive because there is a God there is a God and he is real do you know how many times I felt like Elijah and I said I enough enough I'm tired my entire life I have survived I'm sick of it do you know what it is to be sick of surviving unless you've been there sometimes we don't have compassion with people because maybe you never had to survive maybe you never had to like go through hard things maybe you never had to encounter trauma and if you haven't awesome but for the people that have have compassion on them for the people that are having depression have compassion on them you know what? I am better now than I was even three years ago. That was even when I gave my life to Jesus. I wouldn't trade my wilderness for nothing. And I can honestly tell you that. And I know how dark it was. My last scripture, please, Zechariah. It says, so he answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord to you. Put your name there, okay? You're not Zerubbabel. Put your name not by my not by power but by my spirit says the lord of hosts it was the holy spirit that resurrected jesus from the dead and got him out of the cave so it's the same spirit that resurrected jesus from the dead dwells inside of you and he's our seal of redemption whether you feel it you like it don't agree or not let me tell you that is your truth that is your truth, that is my truth, and I choose to abide in the truth of God. If today's message impacted you in any way, and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below, and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.